Today we tour a stunning mountaintop gem tucked away in the hills of North Carolina. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned as we garden smart. These moments of beauty and relaxation are brought to you by Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs. Our goal is to leave you free to just enjoy your garden. Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs can be found at local garden centers across the country. Power Planters Garden Drill Augers are designed to help you tackle the digging jobs in your garden or yard. Dig through hard soil to assist in planting trees, shrubs, and annuals. Power Planters Heavy Duty Augers, made for professional landscapers and home gardeners alike. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Jaguar F-Pace. Cashers, North Carolina is a sleepy mountain town of around 2,000 that swells to as many as 25,000 in peak season. Convenient to both Asheville and Highlands, it has become a popular vacation destination for those who love exploring the many beautiful sights of the Nantahala National Forest. This cool, lush town is surrounded by 5,000 foot mountain peaks and with over 75 inches of precipitation a year, the area is filled with beautiful rivers, waterfalls, and of course, gardens. Summer temperatures are moderate, enticing visitors from warmer regions to seek a reprieve from the heat and enjoy themselves outdoors. As you might imagine, gardening is very popular as well, and the region has organized a biannual event known as the Joy Garden Tour that features many of the finest gardens in the area. And as a gardener, I'd say it's one of the best reasons to make the trip over to Cashers. It's held on the odd numbered years, so make sure you mark your calendars. Today we visit one of the gardens featured on the Joy Garden Tour, and it's the home of Judy Freeman. Judy protests that she's only an amateur gardener, but her property says otherwise. Judy and her husband painstakingly carve this little piece of heaven out of the woodlands, being very careful with their work in an effort to preserve the natural beauty of the site. The garden and estate have a timeless feel. They have heavily utilized native plants, giving you the sense that the garden is a seamless piece of the mountain. It is perhaps the most stunning example of native mountain landscaping I've seen yet. Judy, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being on the show today. Welcome, happy to have you at Freesia Ridge. No doubt, and the views are amazing up here, and that's, I guess, because we're sitting on top of a mountain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> as you could say that. <laughs> tell me about, tell me about the property. This is a pretty, pretty expansive site you have, and and you and your husband have done an incredible amount of work here. Well, we we have, um, we bought this property uh, in two thousand seven, and uh, we are from New Orleans. We are from the flatlands. Mm -hmm. And we just fell in love with what was up here. And this property became available. It was just uh, a woodland. There had been some trails that a lot of people would come up and use. Uh, there was a little shack that was up here that people could kind of get out of the weather and that sort of thing. And my husband and I would come up. We, we lived in a house just a block away down, down the mountain. We used to bring a bottle of wine and come up and ha watch the sunset. And Wonderful. we enjoyed it so much. And at one point he said, you know, 
might be kind of nice if we thought about buying that place. It's been for sale for some time. Nobody seems to uh, be jumping at it. Uh, it's 26 acres, so wow. that's a lot for anybody to want to take over. But we did buy it, and what we have developed is really only about six acres of the whole okay. property. So a lot of it is still uh, woods and trails. There's an immense granite wall behind us that's in the woods, places where the bears live and that sort of thing. <laughs> we are on Little Terrapin Mountain. Right behind us is Whiteside Mountain, which is one of the oldest mountains in this part of the world. If you go south past Whiteside, you will come to Big Terrapin. And then you have uh, Rock Mountain and Chimney Top. We have 280 degree views. So that's four major mountains that that we get to see and that was one of the things that you know coming from the flatlands we said to be able to have this kind of view outside of some place like Colorado you know is pretty amazing very unique yeah and that is the Nantahala Valley which is a national forest out there so we know it'll never be developed Wonderful. which is fabulous but um <clears throat> we are on a ridge and that's why we call it Frisia Ridge very, very sloped, and so in order to develop it, to make it livable and still have gardens and enjoy the woodlands and such, uh, we did an awful lot of earth moving, I'm sure. rock moving. I can't remember how many hundreds of trucks of rocks that had to come wow. in. What we are standing on right now um, was totally filled. We, we wanted a series of rooms. We didn't want anything to be just open. We wanted to have some little surprises. So as you walk along the paths, you're not real sure what's gonna be around the next corner. And that's kind of the way it is going up to our pavilion. So we have uh, our main house, we have a guest house, and then we have a party house. Nice. <laughs> the <laughs> pavilion, which um, is completely self-sufficient. Uh, my husband loves to cook. We have a his and her kitchen here in this house, and then he has a kitchen up there as well, and um, a water feature. And we've just tried to make um, a variety of things here for enjoyment, to um, make use of what's here naturally and um, try not to make it look too, like we've done too, too much to it. We want to keep that natural element involved in the gardens. So that's why the native plants and mixed in with, with non-natives and such. I think you've done a great job of preserving the natural beauty of this site. There's so many amazing vistas here and there, there's not a bad view. But a couple of them that are really, really special, you've got this, this little overlook um, with a fire pit, which I'm sure you, you love that in, in the cool weather. Yeah. Your grandkids probably enjoy that too. Yeah. We had uh, our grandchildren when they were young uh, went to camp up here. And of course at camp, they all have to have their s'mores and that sort of thing. Of so uh, in the winter time, quite often it's mild enough that you can be down there and just the heat of the fire pit, you know, is toasty. And, comfortable. I don't know, we've had a lot of fun things. We try to have family uh, gatherings up here at Thanksgiving. I had a family reunion of my family in 2013. We had um, 60 people come wow. up and my nephew's son, my family is very military, and right down there my nephew who is a marine fighter pilot had his son commissioned into the Marine Corps. Lots we want this to be a family place and our family loves to come up. We have a, we say a guest house, but it's a, sure. it's a second house for family. We can sleep quite a number of people and um, it just makes it very special. Indeed. So on the way to the guest house, uh, you've got a, a really, really nice water feature mm. and no great garden in my opinion is complete without their without water, water feature. Yeah. Indeed. Talk about that a little bit. Ours is like a weeping wall, which is a little different. It's not a right. waterfall as such. It's not a river but it's perfect for what is up uh, in the area of our, of our pavilion. And it's parabolic in design. Uh, and he put a big rock sort of right in the middle 
that is surrounded by this weeping wall. And he said, sit there and listen, just listen. And the sound is magnified because wow. of the circular, semicircular design of the wall. And you, you hear all these different tones. It has 10 different outlets of water. Hmm. And each one kind of makes a different tone because it's at a different height from where the water hits the pool. And um, we keep fish in it, and koi and goldfish, and it's try a... to keep the raccoons from eating them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the challenge. It's a challenge, it sure is. Judy, what an amazing garden. I love the way that the trails in your garden lead us around these corners that, that open up into these vistas that are just amazing. It's like little elements of surprise and in every direction, it's just such an amazing place. I want, let's start here with the, with the slope garden. All right, now look, the butterflies are having a good time they on, are the, <laughs> on the Joe pie weed there. But this, this garden particularly has changed quite a bit over the years. It started out with plants that were quite small. We did put in things like um, butterfly weed to try right. to get the, uh, the butterflies attracted and that sort of thing. And you can't tell now, but in the spring, we have 300 daffodils in here. And wow. they're the Garden Club of America daffodils, which are absolutely gorgeous. And so we have to be kind of careful when we're putting other plants in that we don't mess up the bulbs that are under the ground. Right. You have, we have to be really careful about that. But as you can see, I wanted a mass of color. And as you can see, there's, there's, there's purples, there's yellows, there's uh, the white, and we just wanted to have mass plantings. Uh, the, uh, the birds love it. The butterflies love it. The bugs love it. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. The black-eyed Susans were just a mass recently. This we're talking towards the end of summer, so things are not looking like they did, you know, earlier in the season. But that's one of the things that we were aiming for as well is to have something that would be beautiful all all year round. Right. You know, not just spring or summer. Well, and there's an incredible diversity in this landscape. So, so many beautiful native plants that are going to attract pollinators. And then you can see just how you'd have this wonderful succession of color year round. And then also, you know, foliage plays into this as well. There's yeah. some amazing plants that are going to give you, you know, vibrant foliage like the oak leaf hydrangeas that are going to look amazing once they start to turn that vibrant fire engine red and the spent seed heads. And um, all of that makes for a very cohesive garden design is something that you can enjoy all year round. We started with a small patch of the Sheffield chrysanthemum because I had, in, in my garden club in New Orleans, we had had a, some speakers who were um, experts on what attracted butterflies and such. And they mentioned that it, they just have grown exponentially. So we're now taking huge clumps out and putting them other places. Wonderful. Which, so they're so happy up here. We're really excited about that. But usually when, when they are blooming, there's butterflies all over them. It's just, it's exciting to see. Yeah, that's, I, I think one of the wonderful things about, about going with a, a great diversity in a garden is you get to learn fairly quickly what likes being there yeah. and what doesn't like being there. And as you're doing with the, uh, the Sheffield chrysanthemums, the things that thrive, of course, those are wonderful plants to start putting in other parts of the garden and moving them around. It's a great way to get free plants, too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit well, about the pollinators. And, and that's clearly something that's been important to you as you think about the garden, attracting the butterflies and the hummingbirds and, and all other kinds of nature. It really has a wonderful impact on the garden as a whole, just bringing, bringing nature um, up near the house. And, uh, and the pollinators are, of course, very, very important for seed production and and also sure. just the ecosystem. Sure, and um, we have bees, and okay. uh, we have several hives of bees. They're a wonderful little Italian bee. They're very gentle. They don't Perfect. go after you <laughs> like um, some of the other bees might. They provide fabulous honey that we were able to collect twice a year. 
as you say, they are really key pollinators. Well, Judy, what a beautiful space. I know you've got a lot to show us, so let's, let's go take a look at other parts of the garden. All right, let's do that. Judy, as you mentioned earlier, the, the gardens beyond the homestead are more wild and free and, and, and more natural. As we get closer to the home, the design becomes much more formal. Let's talk about the plantings around the house. Well, one of the big plantings that you'll see is the boxwood, the American boxwood, which is not something you would think of in, uh, in a wild setting, but for some reason they do beautifully up in the mountains. A lot of people use them. They're easy to care for, or they were until there was a problem with the boxwood blight that struck, I would say, within the last five years. And it was really interesting to see how the first people I knew who had this problem were way down low. And each year, it kind of crept its Just way migrates. up. It did eventually hit us. and. Uh, a lot of people have taken their boxwoods out because it completely defoliates the plant and just it just decimates it and then the plant dies. I said, I'm not gonna let this happen. These boxwoods are too important to my right. home. And so Brad um, Phillips, who tends my gardens, began a very rigorous spraying program. And so far, they are doing fine. The boxwood is one of the iconic staples of the formal garden. Mm -hmm. And it is heartwarming to know that there are things that we can do to battle boxwood blight. Um, it will spread through rain splash from plant to plant to plant. That's why in time, it's navigated throughout most of the of the eastern, you know, east coast of the U.S. Yeah. Um, and it can be treated with fungicide. And one important thing to remember is to rotate the fungicides that you're using, um, because you know fungus it mutates immunity quickly. Or something. Or... Right. It will it will develop you know an immunity to whichever fungicide or a tolerance to it. Yeah. Um, so it's important to kind of you know, trick it from time to time with something different. <laughs> Let, let's go back and talk about native plants, which it was to know is, is very near and dear to your heart and is important to the design of this garden. Even the formal garden heavily features native plants and, and you've used them throughout <laughs> the whole of this design. The, the pear tree, the espalier pear, the boxwoods, the uh, hydrangeas. There are a lot of native plants out there that are fabulous plants that are not being appreciated or known about. Right. And my husband and I, back in 1995, uh, underwrote a program for the Horticulture Committee of uh, GCA where um, underutilized but good plant material, native plants, are um, given an award. It's the only award GCA does that goes to a plant, not to a person. It's the Montine McDaniel Freeman Horticulture Award, and it it goes to a plant, and the person and the club is recognized that sure that um, nominates it. But it's the plant itself that wins, which I think is pretty neat. Right? Well, that's a wonderful award, and and uh, it's 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 great to hear that that we're celebrating natives, and and hopefully it encourages more garden clubs to really focus their their attention and their energy on the next generation of great native plants for the garden. There's these wonderful little garden rooms that you've created, and, and I want you to kind of talk us through, um, talk us through a number of those. I know as we were walking in, we can look down on your beautiful dahlia garden. Um, tell us about those. This is you, you obviously have had wonderful success with them. Well, off and on, <laughs> <laughs> this year uh, particularly, yes, they they have done beautifully. A big question up here for a lot of garden people is, do we leave the dahlias in the ground or do we take them out? And there's arguments for both sides. The ones that are left in the ground will not come back the next year okay. uh, in full force very well. Last year, I think half of what we had planted came mm. back, which was a real disappointment. So we dug them up and stored them in some loose soil and kept them in our garage. Then the spring, uh, they were replanted in the ground and every one of them came up. Wow. And not only did they come up, they are just taller than you and I. But they've been well fertilized and 
Uh, they're just blooming like crazy. So, and actually we've been around to see a number of gardens, like High Hampton has a dahlia garden and such, and their little dahlias really never got past here, and we don't know quite why. So we just felt lucky. Well, that's, that's it's just the joys of gardening, is having, you know, <clears> there's, <throat> there's ups and downs, and, and the bumper years are, are super exciting. Beyond the Dahlia Garden, we can we can hear your, your lovely chickens. <laughs> and, and I know that, of course, you enjoy them for the eggs and, and probably their wonderful company. But also, they're, they're kind of the, the composters of your garden as well, right? Exactly, exactly. They do enjoy our company. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whenever we go out the door, they start talking to us. So Naturally. They, <laughs> but uh, we only have, well, we have six now. We usually keep around four. But... Uh, no roosters, just the hens for the laying, for the eggs. And uh, the residue from the chickens goes directly into the compost where it breaks down. And it makes, I, I just, people think I'm crazy, but I, I love to make dirt. <laughs> I sure. just, I love my compost pile. I mean, it's just, it's fascinating to watch how it breaks down and just makes this wonderful light uh, soil. It's full of worms. But that dirt then goes into my vegetable garden and the vegetable garden are raised beds, okay. so it's easier on the back. It also helps keep a lot of the critters out, I think, when they're raised like that. But I, I do have a picture somewhere of a young bear who has crawled up into the garden, <laughs> and she's sitting in the middle of my lettuce patch, just helping herself to all the oh, lettuce, wow. just feeding her face. Well, the bears love good food, too. With her own, her own <laughs> private salad garden. It's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful sight. Of course, like I said, there's there's not a bad view in this garden. Judy, thank you so much for being with us today. We've learned so much from you, and and uh, what an amazing garden well, tour. Thank you. It's our pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Each week we travel the country north to south, east to west, visiting some of the most exciting gardens, as well as talking to industry horticulturalists about design principles, new plants, and also how you can be most successful with your home gardens. We also love answering your gardening questions, so visit us on the web at Gardensmart.com. These moments of beauty and relaxation are brought to you by Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs. Our goal is to leave you free to just enjoy your garden. Proven Winners Flowering Shrubs can be found at local garden centers across the country. Power Planters Garden Drill Augers are designed to help you tackle the digging jobs in your garden or yard. Dig through hard soil to assist in planting trees, shrubs, and annuals. Power Planters Heavy Duty Augers, made for professional landscapers and home gardeners alike. DRAM has been providing gardeners with professional equipment for over 80 years. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Jaguar F-Pace. I feel like I could have spent a week here and still not experienced everything. What an amazing garden. If you have questions about anything you've seen today, visit us on the web at Gardensmart.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, even if you're a master gardener, there's always more to learn. So stay tuned for more great gardening tips and ideas as we garden smart.